channel. It's Janet. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like and also hit that notification bell so that YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back to my channel. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some Easter ideas. So Easter is coming up only in a few days and I want you guys to stay on track. So for most holidays, during my weight loss journey of losing over 100 pounds, I stayed on track. I stayed on track during those holidays. I had my birthday, I had Christmas, I had Easter, all of those. During my weight loss journey, I stayed keto. And you wanna know why? It's very easy to stay keto when your favorite foods, most of them already are keto, and you can make step substitutions. So in today's video, my family is going to be having ham and scalloped potatoes, and instead of the scalloped potatoes, I am making a cauliflower bake. And it is absolutely one of my favorites. I made it even through my weight loss journey. My youngest daughter, Zoe, really, really loves it as well too, and she's 18. And I'm telling you guys, it's really, really easy and a great side dish as well too. So just make sure that you can stay on keto even during the holidays. If you guys have a planned cheat for that meal, then that's great as well too, but just make sure that you get back on keto for your next meal. So yeah, also in this video, I am going to be sharing some keto desserts that are great to have on hand during Easter as well too. I will be sharing with you some poppy seed lemon loaf that is keto, and I will be making some keto white chocolates as well that you can enjoy this Easter. So if that's what you're interested in, then keep on watching. So I'm going to make ham and scalloped potatoes, and then ham and loaded cauliflower bake for myself. It's going to be keto. So in the frying pan I have some oil, and then we just sliced up our ham that we got, and we are just going to fry up that ham. And let's get started on the loaded cauliflower bake. Okay, so we are going to start by cutting up our cauliflower. So this is quite a big cauliflower, so I will probably just be using a half or three quarters of it. I'm just gonna put it in this size of baking dish. It's a glass baking dish. I would say it's probably like nine by nine. Since I'm the only one that will be probably eating this, the rest of my family is going to have scalloped potatoes. So we will chop this up into bite-sized pieces and then we will put it in um, a saucepan and let it kind of steam up to soften it a little bit. So let's just do that. done with the cauliflower and we are just going to put all of this inside our pot. Um, I just have a shallow saucepan um, with some water so I will show you guys that and we are just going to steam it up for about five minutes or so. All right so I have some boiling water. This is what I do to steam my cauliflower for the cauliflower bake. You guys can do it any way if you have one of those steamers or whatever way you like it but this is just what I do and I just put all of that cauliflower in there. And I just leave the big pieces bigger. Um, they get broken down anyways, or else we can make them smaller after they're cooked. But I find it's just easier to cook it, um, to steam it when they're whole like this, then they just don't break apart too, too easily. So there we go. So I'm just going to let that steam. I'm gonna put a lid on it and we will let that steam probably, we'll check on in about five minutes or so. So we'll put the lid on and check back on it in a little bit. All right, so I've had this steaming for about 10 minutes, I would say, and I just checked it with a fork and you wanna make sure that it's soft enough for a fork to go through, but not so soft that it totally comes apart, comes apart cause it will finish cooking and cook a little bit in the oven once we put it in there. So I'm going to turn this off now 
And also too, I am making some bacon. I'm making bacon because I'm going to also make a side of green beans. And I'm also making bacon so that I can put some on top of the cauliflower baked casserole as well too. So we'll just finish cooking this up and we don't want to cook it all the way through because like I said, we're putting the cauliflower bake in the oven. It'll finish cooking then and then I'll be cooking um, the green beans as well too in this. So I don't want to cook it all the way till that it's crispy. So I'm just going to cook it a little bit longer, a few minutes, and then I will turn it off and we will be ready to finish and assemble our cauliflower bake. All right, so this recipe is really, really easy. I will write it down below. I didn't really find a recipe online to make this. I just kind of made it myself. There's a lot of recipes out there for a keto cauliflower bake, but the one that I'm making today, I will write out in the description box below. So I will need a cup of sour cream, and I'm hoping I have a cup left. I'm just gonna put the rest that I have in here. And then I will also put a cup of shredded cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese that you like. Um, but today I'm gonna to be using sh um, shredded cheddar with, and then I'm going to top it with this Tex-Mex that I got. So this should be about a cup, I would say. You guys know I don't measure a lot of stuff, um, but definitely I encourage you guys always to measure if you're still losing and watching your macros as well too. So sometimes what I like to put in here, I probably won't do it today, but I do like putting in um, some um, cream cheese as well too. Cream cheese tastes really, really good in this mixture. And, um, but I think we have enough sour cream that I think it's gonna be all right. Okay, so we're gonna preheat our oven to 425. And then we are going to mix this with our steamed cauliflower and then put it in our baking dish. So really, really easy, you guys. You know I keep things simple, so let's do that next. All right, so here is our cauliflower and we are just going to mix in our sour cream and shredded cheese. There we go. See how we do just with how much we have because I'm afraid I don't want it to be like too, too dry since this was a pretty big cauliflower. So I'm just gonna mix this all together, make sure that all the cauliflower is all covered. You guys can break it apart more if you would like. Um, either or, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, once it's in the, the dish and you're able to cut into it, once it's ready to be served, then it'll be cut Anyways, I just kind of like to keep it a little bit whole um, just so that there's not so many little pieces. And let's put it in our dish. We're gonna put it in our glass dish here. I'm actually, I am going to leave those two big chunks out. If you guys feel like you wanna um, add some more sour cream or add um, cream cheese to this, you very well can. There we go. So now what we're just going to do is we're going to top it with some more shredded cheese and we're going to put some bacon bits on top. You can use about um, a half a cup or so, I would say probably, depending on what size of pan you're using as well too. If you guys wanted to do some meal prep with this and make it with a large pan, you can do that as well, a nine by 13. I'm just gonna use this small pan though for tonight's dinner. And I'm also going to put some of the bacon bits on top. So these are the bacon bits. They're not fully cooked because they will cook a little bit more once they're in the oven. So I'm gonna use about half of these and then the other half I'm gonna leave in the frying pan for my green beans. And sometimes I add a little bit of the bacon grease just to give it a little bit more flavor. This is optional, you guys don't have to do this, but I like doing it just for the pure sake of having some extra fat and flavor in it. There we go, perfect. And then we will fry up our green beans in this pan here. All right, so this is good to go into the oven right now, you guys. So we will be cooking it at a 425 degree oven for 25 minutes. So let's do that. 
All right, you guys, this is it right out of the oven. It looks delicious and so good. Usually me and Zoe, my youngest, we eat this. She absolutely loves it, so. Um, but this will be good for meal prep. This will last me three or four meals and it'll be so good as a side dish to go with our ham for Easter. All right, so I have frozen green beans and I just put a little bit of water on a microwave safe bowl and I am going to microwave this for a few minutes and that's how I'm going to steam mine and then I will put it in the frying pan with the bacon and fry them up in there as well for extra flavor and to get them all the way through cooked as well. All right, the green beans are all done from the microwave. So I'm just going to fry this up with the bacon pieces and then the side dish will be all done. All right, another thing that I decided that I was going to make was going to be some um, cheese scones to go with dinner. So I'm going to make the carb quick cheese biscuits. The recipe is on the very back if you guys do purchase the carb quick. I will have this recipe listed down below though just in case you don't have the box and you do have carb quick. I am going to half the recipe though because the full recipe makes 10 servings. So I'm just going to half it so that I have about five biscuits. All right Indeed. so we will need one cup of the carb quick. So this is a half cup, so I'm going to do two of these to make a full cup. There we go. Then I am going to need two ounces of butter, which I have here. I just measured it out. And we are just going to give that a quick mix, um, just until it resembles like a coarse kind of meal. And then I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of shredded cheese. And some garlic salt. This calls for garlic powder and a pinch of salt, but I am just gonna use this cause it's garlic salt. All right, and then we are going to make sure that that's all well mixed. Um, it says a quarter of heavy, quippy, heavy whipping cream and a quarter of a cup of water. So I am going to try to half those. So I'm just going to have a little bit of water and then I'm gonna to top it up with my heavy whipping cream. There we go. And we're gonna pour this mixture into the dry mix. And then it says mix until dough far forms or comes together, but do not overwork the dough. So pretty much just get it until it's wet. I've made these before and they're actually pretty good. They freeze really, really well. Cause of course the first time that I made them, I made the, the whole recipe and froze them and they were really, really good. All right, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to over mix it, but I just want to make sure everything is um, well combined. And then we just drop the dough onto a greased cookie sheet and we will bake in a hot oven for eight to 10 minutes and we will have that preheated to 450. So let's do that. Let's try to divvy this up into five scones. in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. All right, so I left these in the oven for nine minutes and they are a little bit uh, golden around the outside and I didn't want to overcook them. So I took them out and these will also make a great side dish as well too for Easter. All right, everyone, this is our Easter dinner. I have the loaded cauliflower um, bake right there it looks delicious i also have some green beans with some bacon and we have our ham and we also have our cheese scone with a little bit of butter on top so that is going to be our easter dinner 
All right, guys, I am going to be making a poppy seed lemon loaf, a keto poppy seed lemon loaf. Lemon loaf. So I am going to be using the recipe out of the Southern Keto Cookbook. I got this, actually, I was gifted a $25 gift card from Jess at Journey to Healthy, and that is what I used to get this this cookbook, you guys. And I've been marking off things that I want to make. So I thought today I would try the poppy seed lemon loaf and have it as a dessert for Easter. So let's get into the video and let's make this recipe. I'm not going to share the amounts, but I will show the ingredients that I use. So let's get started. This um, recipe actually uses coconut flour. So I always love it when I can find recipes that have coconut flour since I am allergic to almonds, I'm allergic to all nuts, so I do like it when I can find recipes that do use the coconut flour, you guys. So we are just gonna put some coconut flour in a small um, container and with some erythritol as well. This is the erythritol I use. I just got this off of Amazon when I started keto. Um, so whatever your preference is, I know that um, Marshalls and Winners, which is like a TJ Maxx in the States, they carry a lot of this stuff and they have it for really, really good prices. So if you're looking for that and looking for a good place to buy it, I would highly recommend going there. Right, then we are going to add some baking powder. And then also some xanthan gum. So I just bought this. I was kind of late to the game, but I finally ended up getting it. It's just that it is really, really expensive, but I think this is going to last a long time because a lot of recipes don't require that much. Um, so I finally ended up getting it. So I'm going to use it in this recipe today. I always use the pink Himalayan salt for everything, my cooking, my baking, and absolutely everything. All right, so we are gonna whisk this. We are gonna put some eggs. And we are going to put some sour cream. I'm gonna put some oil as well. This is gonna be all of our wet ingredients. All right, and then we are going to whisk that all up together and then we are just going to combine both of them. Then we will put on our dry ingredients. We are going to add some lemon zest and from that lemon, we are going to use the juice from that lemon. So I have a lined loaf pan here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this is all mixed up and we are going to put it in our loaf pan. So I highly recommend getting this cookbook, you guys. Um, I'm sorry I'm not sharing the quantities. It's just that people work really, really hard for these cookbooks. I would have to say out of everything, it's really, really hard to make up recipes, especially keto recipes. Um, you may find it online or something similar. This one seemed really, really easy. Um, so that is why I decided to make it because <laughs> I like easy recipes. Um, I don't mind baking a few things once in a while. I'm not a huge baker but um i like to try things once in a while for sure all right so this is our batter and i'm just going to put it in a loaf pan i preheated my oven to 325. all right there we go that is all done and i am going to get it all sorted and then we are going to leave it bake for 50 to 50 to 60 minutes in the oven guys this is it out of the oven it deflated a little bit but I think it's still gonna be good it smells really really good so I'm gonna just take it out of the loaf pan here and I'm just gonna let it cool on the cooling rack for a little bit before I slice in okay and then we will slice in and see how it tastes and see what it looks like on the inside, you guys. But to, I'm gonna do a little drizzle over this and what it's gonna consist of is some of the Swerve icing sugar and some lemon juice. So I'm going to put some Swerve. I'm not gonna measure it because um, I don't want very much, but you need quite a bit of icing sugar in order to get even a little bit of, of a glaze. So I'm probably gonna put maybe, I don't know, I wanna say it's about a third of a cup maybe in here. 
And then I'm just gonna squeeze some of the lemon juice in here. And I'm not gonna put very much of this, maybe like a teaspoon to start out with, because you don't need very, very much. And then we are just going to stir that up and add more lemon juice if needed. We are just gonna let that sit for a few minutes and then we will cut open into it. All right, you guys, let's taste this. Mm. That is delicious. That tastes like lemon loaf. It's very, very lemony, which is nice. Really, really good. So that is going to be a nice option for you guys to have maybe as a dessert at Easter. And you guys can make this and I guarantee you, your family will even love it as well too. It's very, very good. I love the poppy seeds and it tastes just like the real thing. All right, you guys, another idea that I wanted to do for Easter was to make some chocolates, okay? So I got this off of my previous haul um, from Nutramarket and I will link that video here. It's actually a really, really good haul of all the keto goodies that I get. So I have gotten these and then I got this at Michael's because I wanted to get some silicone that was kind of good for any occasion. So this is the one that I got just to make some chocolates. And we are going to make some chocolates today using coconut oil and just the white chocolate chips. So let's get started on that. Okay, so I don't have a recipe that I use for this, um, but I'm thinking it's probably kind of like a fat bomb in a sense. We're just going to technically melt a little bit of the coconut oil and some of the white chocolate chips. So that is my plan. Um, we'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna do half of these actually just regular white chocolate and then the other half I'm gonna put some um, vanilla extract in it. And let's see how it all turns out, you guys. I love white chocolate, so I'm anxious to try these. So let's just mix a little bit of the chocolate chips and a little bit of the coconut um, oil and we're gonna do it in like 10 second increments on the, in the microwave, okay, to get this melted together. All right, so I did three increments of 15 seconds. So it is starting to melt, but I think I used too much of the coconut oil. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the chocolate chips. There we go, that'll be good. And I'm just gonna keep on stirring it because I don't wanna put it back in the microwave. It's pretty well melted. So I think if I just kind of maybe keep on stirring it, then the rest of it will all get melted as well too. So let's see, I might put it in actually one more time. Then what I'm going to do is I grabbed a couple mugs here and I am going to color three different colors just to get kind of festive for Easter. So there we go, that this all melts. So I just encourage you guys to like, make sure that you keep on stirring it and don't put it back in the microwave because then it'll burn. Um, so that's what I do. I just make mine in the microwave. You guys can make yours even on the stove top. But I'm going to divide these into two cups and then I'm gonna keep some in this bowl. Like so let's put light pink and some light green and light blue maybe. So I'm just gonna start because I want these to be like a really pale color. So I'm just gonna start with one because I feel like sometimes the color can get a little bit too, too much if you add too much straight away with food coloring. For so long, I've been trying to get you out of my head. Oh yeah. But somehow, I always seem to wake up in your bed mm -mm. Baby, if we talk for a minute, then maybe we'd be getting somewhere uh -uh. I just wanna love you a little, to see where this is going
chocolates how cute are those so these are really really easy to make like I also said you guys can even do like half of the white chocolate and half of the milk chocolate or even the caramel that would be a cute little contrast but I did want to make these for Easter just to have on hand um, you know kind of when everybody else everybody else gets their chocolates especially if you have kids and they get their Easter baskets and these you can have on keto because they are made with the Lily's chocolate chips, you guys. They look delicious. So let's give one, a, let's give it a taste test. All right, you guys, let's taste one of these sugar-free Easter candies. Oh. <laughs> they taste like white chocolate, like real white chocolate. Highly recommend you guys, really, really simple and easy to do. And while your kids are opening up their Easter baskets and enjoying some of their chocolates, you guys can enjoy yours too. All right, everyone, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure that you let me know down in the comments if you're liking these videos. Which videos do you like me posting? Do you like recipes? Do you like what I eat in a day? I always love hearing your feedback because if you guys don't comment, I don't know what to post or what you guys want to see. So I love some suggestions down below or just let me know what kind of videos you're enjoying. All right, so make sure that you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and also hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.